Hi all, welcome to Salesforce in 5 minutes. In this video, we are going to understand how to expose our Apex classes to the external system and also we are going to test our, uh, our exposed Apex classes to the external system whether they are properly exposed to the external system or not using Workbench. Not any other tool but using Workbench. But before that, if you are liking my videos and I was able to help you about Salesforce or learn Salesforce at all, please subscribe to our channel. So let's jump back to our video. So first I'm going to go and create, go to the developer console. And I am going to create an Apex class. So I have created an Apex class. Now first things first, if I have to expose this Apex class to the external system, I have to provide at the red rest yeah. so first I have to provide at the red rest resource annotation and along with that I have to also provide the URL mapping So now as soon as you make your Apex as REST resource, automatically Salesforce understand that you are trying to expose this Apex class to the external system. And if you want certain variable or Apex class to be exposed to the external system, it must be global. Right. So as soon as I make global, there are no errors found. The next thing I want to get all the contacts that are available within my system. I want to expose all the contact to the external system. Okay, so I'm going to do it using HTTP get method. Now using HTTP get method, you can expose whatever resources that are or data that is available within your Salesforce or to the external system. Next, I'm going to create a method that will expose the data. Not void, let's say list of contact. and then list of contact and I'm just going to provide limit one I just want to expose any contact right now not specific I'm just going to expose any contact right now okay the next thing is as I'm using HTTP get method the method should be also global and I also have not provided this okay okay now my class is safe now I'm going to go to work bench and then I'm going to test whether this expose apex class is working perfectly fine or not Now to check that first of all first check that whether you are logged into a perfect org or not so i am logged into salesforce.5 minutes org next i am going to go to utilities and out of this utilities i am going to go to the rest explorer so now without using any kind of postman or any other tool you can check whether your exposed apex class are working perfectly fine or not so right now this is our url mapping right so remove this part use first of all the get method you are you want to get the data from the external system right so first use the get method use the services but remove the rest and write apex rest slash your url mapping now with the help of url mapping the use of the url mapping is to detect which class or which class i need to get inside uh, from uh, like which class the external system needs to access you can provide it inside the url mapping so it can automatically identify so now i'm going to click on execute so see I am able to get the data so if I go to this particular ID such kind of contact does exist into my system right as you guys can see Mr. Novle so this kind of contact does exist into my system this is because 
and this is accessible to the workbench because I have exposed this Apex class to the external system. So now what if I want to get all the contacts within my system? So I'll just remove, remove the limit part. And again, I'm going to just execute. So I am able to get all the contacts that are available within my system. So I'm getting ID and name because I have queried ID and name within my query itself. So this is how you can expose all the contacts that are available within your system to the external system, right? So you can express or uh, expose all the resources or the data of your system, Salesforce system to the external system using HTTP get and rest resource. But if you check one thing in this, that we are trying to get all the contacts or at least one contact. But what if I want to get a specific contact? So for an example, I want to get a contact with ID is equals to, let's say one to three. What if I want to get that specific contact? Now to do that, you need to pass a parameter. It makes a lot of sense to pass a parameter. So let's try to pass a parameter. But if you see HTTP methods, does not support parameter so this is also can be an interview question that does http method accepts the parameter it does not okay http method does not accepts any kind of parameter so how do i get it how do i how do i get the like how do i pass a parameter like how do i get the particular data if i want uh, a particular record any data how do i do it so in that cases first of all we need to understand how actually we pass the record id from the url so to understand that we need to go to this url so let's say I want to get a particular contact. So let's say I want to get this particular contact, this record ID contact. If I want to get it, so first I'm going to provide the uh, first of all what, whatever record ID uh, uh, record ID contact that I want. So my parameter can be anything like record ID or it can be anything for uh, SF ID whatever I want equals to the ID that I want. Okay, this is how the URL will try to get the data. So what this URL is doing, it will, it is going to request from the Salesforce that please give me this this data. Okay, so as it is going to request from the Salesforce, I need to create a request uh, object. Right. So once that is done, using the request, like it is going to request from uh, the Salesforce that I want kind of this kind of data, like this ID data. So that's why I've created this request object. And then I need to get the params. Now to get the params, you can use req dot that is a request params. Now this params returns the data in the form of key and value pair. The key would be SF ID and the value will be the actual ID that we have passed. Okay. So first I need to store it inside the map. So now inside the map of data, it will return the parameter Salesforce ID will be the key and the value will be the actual ID that you have passed. Okay. Now what I want is I want to pass the, I want to get the record ID, right? So I'm going to get use string my rec ID equals to from this map of data dot get, I'll pass the key. So as, as I've already said inside this URL, this SFID is the key and the value is the actual ID. So I'm going to pass SFID over here. So let's check first of all whether record ID is getting passed or not. Okay, I have to lock. Clear the lock. And execute it. Okay, I need to pass star at the URL. So let's try it out. Okay, it has returned everything, but if you go to the log and check the debug, if you see the record ID is successfully passed from the workbench to your Salesforce org. That is BAA00. 
if I go to the URL and B A A zero. So perfectly, we are able to pass the record ID from the workbench that is external system in our case to the Salesforce, right? And now once we have received the request, now I'm going to try to get the record ID, particular record ID. So right now, if I try to again execute the same uh, URL from the workbench, it should return me my Salesforce Young contact only. Let's try it out. So as you can see, it's just returning one account because from the URL, I am passing the SFID, right? And whatever request that we are getting from the workbench, we are trying to get the parameters from that request. So in that case, our parameters are SFID. After question mark, uh, everything is a parameter. So in which key is SFID and value is the record ID. So uh, using request.params, I'm getting all the parameters and using particular key, right? SFID is the key. I'm getting the record ID from it. And once the record ID have, I have got the record ID, I'm trying to use it in the query and return the record. But let's say I, this is only one parameter, right? What if I have to pass multiple parameters? So in that cases also, what you can do is inside the URL itself, you can go and your let's say email is the next uh, you are uh, this parameter so i'm going to get this particular email just use and and after that provide the url yeah, that is and and the next parameter that you want to right and you can get that parameter over here using And also I'm going to apply it to the URL. So I'm going to execute it again. Let's say Salesforce Young should be written. So it's returning perfectly fine. Let's go to the debug log and check whether the email was passed perfectly or not. See, so whatever email that we passed was automatically fetched within our Apex class if we use this request.params and then get the params as per as the need using the key that is SFID and email. So this is how you can expose your Apex class to the external system and also pass the parameter from the external system inside your Salesforce and get the particular data. In the next video, we are going to understand how to put the data from the external system inside our Salesforce org. So if you like this video and I was able to help you out with understanding exposing of your Apex class to the external system, please subscribe to this channel. It will mean me a lot.